want to talk to you today about the serious sin of gambling. Uh, recently, I made a video here, uh, you'll see it on the channel, about a possible casino moving into our area here, which is just, I can't even fathom the wicked people that are trying to do this. Servants of Satan, absolutely. And I'm going to show you from the scriptures that they are definitely servants of Satan. Gambling is not some kind of a thing that's just, well, it's okay. Oh no, I'm going to show you that it is one of the greatest sins. As a matter of fact, I can even prove the point that every hellbound, that every sinner that ever went to hell, they all gambled. They gambled with their salvation. I think I'll be all right. I, I, I bet you I'm going to be okay when I meet God. I'd, I'd be willing to wager that, I'm, that my good works are going to outweigh my bad works. They all gambled and they lost. But I want to show you what the scriptures have to say about gambling. Now, I have three main issues with gambling. Okay, and this, these are issues that you, you don't even have to be a Christian to, to see the logic behind this. Okay, the most hardcore atheist could admit, yeah, that's, that's true. You make some good points there. Point number one, a gambler tries to get money without working for it. All right, that's what they're trying to do. Let's just say some bum off the street, some guy is a total, he's left his wife and his children destitute and whatever else. Um, he, he's just you know, a drunkard and he's whatever else. And he takes some money and he goes in to whatever casino and he hits it big. And all of a sudden, you know, he's coming out as a millionaire. Did he work for it? No. Uh, he went in as a bum. Is he going to come out a moral character, upstanding member of society? No. No, he's still going to be a bum. He's just going to be a bum with more money. All right. Gambling is literally some lazy slob getting money that they didn't work for. Okay? Number two, a gambler is not content with their wages. You say, well, I work, I just like to have a little bit of fun on this on the side. Okay, why aren't you content with your wages? Get your paycheck and you go into the casino and you want to get a little bit more. Why? Not content with the uh, work, that your job that's, you know, what you're being paid or whatever else. And maybe I'll just uh, work harder and, and maybe I'll get my own business. And, oh, no, I'm just going to go down to the casino and get rich that way. Number three, the most important reason I am against, and anybody should be against casinos and gambling, the third reason is in order for you to get rich, a lot of other people have to become poor. Okay. Gambling and casinos, casinos are not some magic place where money just appears and comes in there somehow magically and you can come in and win it, okay? You go into a casino, you are taking the money of people that have come in there and lost everything. Think about that. Uh, what, what would that be? That'd be called uh, stealing. You say, well, they did it of their own free will. Well, sure, okay, I'll grant you that. But uh, they went in expecting to win. And don't tell me that the casinos are fair, by the way. There's an old saying, the house always wins. They set those things up to make sure that they don't go out of business. It isn't just random luck and whatever else. Don't give me that. Don't kid me. If a casino did that, there's a chance that they could get themselves out of business in a hurry. They could go bankrupt. When's the last time you saw a casino going bankrupt? Plenty of stories of in the Old West, you know, I have, a, I have a series of Old West books, Time Life books or something like this, and they had the casinos and gambling and whatever, and they showed how that a lot of these, uh, the tables and, the, and a lot of these things were actually rigged so that uh, they could tilt it a certain way so the little ball that goes around, you know, would go into a certain spot, you know, when they needed to, so the people wouldn't win too much. Oh, but I'm sure that they don't do it anymore. Right. Let's look at what the Bible has to say about work. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Let's see where I'm going to here. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. You're going to work hard physically hard. 
It's funny, a lot of my enemies here on YouTube, a lot of people that say I don't work for a living and whatever else, um, they're just people that live in the city in some townhouse or whatever else and don't know what physical labor is all about. They think they have a nine to five job and that qualifies them for working hard and whatever. And it's good that they have a nine to five job, don't get me wrong. But uh, I work quite a bit out here. I'm on my land right now. There's a lot of things I need to do. A lot of pruning of trees, a lot of felling of trees, firewood, building a house eventually out of logs. Um, I'm no stranger to physical hard work. But uh, I guess maybe if we get a casino into the area, I can just take some money and go there and bet right. And if uh, Lady Luck is on my side, Lucifer, another way to say it, uh, if, if Luck is on my side, I can all of a sudden get money and then I can pay somebody else to build my house for me. And uh, I'll just do it that way. Uh, what kind of a preacher would I turn out to be? Pretty rotten one, like most preachers. Go to Genesis chapter 9. So we read there before the flood. Now let's read about after the flood. Do things change? Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the, the earth upon and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. God gave Adam the green herb and said, Till the ground. There's farming. God says to Noah and his sons, The herb's still there. You still eat your fruits and vegetables. But now I've given you your animals. You can go out and you can raise livestock. You can go out and you can hunt. You can fish. Yeah. Work. Not, uh, hey, hey, Noah, you know, why don't you set up some nice games of chance? You know, you're going to have to have people replenish the earth first. But a couple generations from now, you can set up the earth and, and get people coming in there for easy money. No. God intended man to work. And I'll tell you what, there's no more rewarding thing than you having a full day of hard physical labor and you get to the end of the day and you look back at what all you've done. Boy, look at all that firewood we split. Boy, look at all that, the, the rows of the garden that we tilled and everything else. And we got the, the plants, you know, the seeds planted in there rather. And uh, boy, that, I, that was sure good mucking out those uh, cow stalls and, and whatever else. And boy, built that new chicken coop for my chickens. And, and but, You see, it's a great thing. You build a house yourself. Physical labor. That's what God intended. God did not intend for you to get rich quickly. You say, well, that's all Old Testament. What about the New Testament? 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. If you're a Bible believer, if you're familiar with the Scriptures, you already know where I'm going. If you're newly saved or lost and just watching this, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, well, you would do well to, to understand what the Bible teaches also. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Oh, look at me. I just got back. I hit it rich. I was there at the casino. I made all this money. Did you work for it? Why well, I had to sit there at the table and I put my money down and things and I came out rich. Then you didn't work for it. I realize that this will never happen, but I'll tell you what, if I was the president of this country, if I could, I wouldn't even have to be the president because they'd kill me in no time at all. If I could somehow militarily take over this country, <laughs> yeah, right, like that's going to happen, I would destroy every single casino in this country. I would forbid gambling from shore to shining shore. It would be illegal. Why? Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach unto any people. That's what the Bible says. You're a sinner. You're wicked if you're going out and trying to get rich without working for it. You're a miserable wretch. Let's look at a couple more scriptures on the thing of dishonest gain, also known as gambling. I mean, what is gambling? It's dishonest gain. You didn't work for it. Proverbs chapter 1 you want a, a portion of scripture that perfectly describes gambling? You get somebody that, you know, I'm a Christian and I like gambling. I like to do a little bit of gambling now and then. I, you know, I like going down to Vegas and, yeah, mm -hmm. here's where you turn them to. Okay. 
If you're a Bible-believing Christian, if you're born again and you have some wicked relative that, that says that they're a Christian but they're for gambling, here's where you turn them. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10 through 19. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Let's go on down to the uh, casino here. Look at all the bright lights. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without calls. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. What do you think the people that build casinos do? That just described them perfectly right there. Absolutely perfectly. A bunch of rich, stinking, wicked people. Let's, let's, let's go into a wilderness area of northern Maine, beautiful natural area, and let's build a casino. Why? Because they want to bankrupt people. They want to fill their houses with the spoils of the people of this area. And they say, oh, but, but we're going to bring in, you know, lots of good things. Again, I showed this article. Not going to go through the whole thing, but I showed this article in my other video where I pointed to this Shin Pun Investments thing. And, you know, you ought, to, you ought to see this whole thing here. I'm not going to go through the whole article, but, you know, oh, we're going to show you here some of the stuff. Um, proposed gaming facility that features a lobster theme and mixed-use space that the website suggests might be used for a variety of events and activities. We're going to be here to help the, the community. It's not just a casino. We're also going to have, a, a you know, community things, <laughs> you know. And, uh, yeah, uh, it says here, we'll create 2,165 permanent job positions and 2,767 construction jobs. It's good for the economy. <laughs> you know, we'll boost household earnings by $183.2 million and contribute $248.1 million in tax revenues over the first five years of operation. Oh, see, they're doing good things. And you go back through and all this stuff, and it's, you know, we're going to give uh, money to this organization and that. Like I said, I'm not going to go into a big thing, but... We're going to give to charity. We're going to give to elderly people. And we're going to do all this. Yeah, uh, Al Capone did the same thing. The famous uh, mafia man from the early 1900s. Oh, Al Capone. I mean, look, at, look into that thing if you don't believe me. The guy was giving all kinds of money to charity. <laughs> Can't you fi people figure that out? Why? Because they're uh, thieves. That's why. They want to fill their houses with your spoil. Oh, it's going to be good for the economy. They mean for their economy. Casino comes into this area. There are a lot of poor people in this area. They're going to bankrupt those people if they go. If those people try to go and get rich to pay their bills or whatever else. I'd also uh, get rid of lottery, by the way, too. Don't give me this thing. Well, it's just casinos. Lottery is just as wicked. People, you know, barely make ends meet and they're going there and they're buying these lottery tickets. You know, I mean, how many of us have been behind the, the person there and they're buying lottery tickets with a credit card <laughs> and then they're sitting there scratching it off while you're there in line waiting. You know, can I please get my stuff paid for? <sighs> Got to get rich quick, you know. Verse 14, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 14. Cast in thy lot among us, let us all have one purse. How about that? What is a casino? Again, you're going there, you, you put your money in and whatever else, and, and, and uh, they give you the little chips and all this stuff like that. Hey, let's all join together. Let's all be in this. It's a joint venture, you know, and all this stuff. Let's uh, get a bunch of Freemasons and a bunch of other wicked people together and country clubbers and whatever else, and let's, let's build a casino in the area. I think it'd be good for the economy. Wicked people all have one purse. God's going to damn these people to hell, I'll tell you that. If you're behind casinos and in with this whole thing and lottery and gambling and all this, God's going to send you to hell. You're a wicked individual. And I won't shed one tear over it. you got to sear your conscience to be able to say, I'm going to make a living taking other people's money. Watching people who come in and they're, and they're hopefully, maybe I can make a little bit of money. And what do they end up doing? They lose it all. I mean, I mean, how can you have a conscience and, and see some poor individual walk into your casino, lose everything, and they walk out penniless, knowing that they're going to have to go home to their wife and children and try to explain that? You dirty, disgusting individual, you casino people. 
Verse 15, My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their, privily for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Casino people are greedy of gain, and they destroy the lives of a lot of people. Oh, but they create jobs. Yeah, they create jobs just like uh, bringing prostitution to an area or drug dealing to an area. It's wicked. It's a very, very, very wicked thing. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 27. Proverbs 15, verse 27 says, He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. Good verse against somebody who would go out and actually gamble their money. You're greedy of gain, and what are you doing? You're troubling your own house. The wife says, uh, hey, we need that paycheck. Uh, boy, I can't wait till my husband gets home from work. Why, where is he? He's kind of late getting back. A couple hours later, the husband comes walking in, smelling like cigarette smoke and a little bit of alcohol on his breath and whatever else, and she says, where were you? Oh, I'm a little sorry. I, I, I tried to make some extra money and... Well, you know, and she says, oh, you were at the casino, huh? Uh, this happened again? I mean, how many times has that been repeated down through the years? You lost it all again? How are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to put food on the table? What are we going to do? What's he doing? He's troubling his own house. Why? Because he's greedy of gain. He doesn't say, hey, I'm going to go out and get a second or a third job. Hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to work harder. No. I'm just going to go out and try to get some dishonest gain quick. And like I said, you I mean you could be the most hardcore atheist in the whole world, and still, you have to admit, gambling is corrupt. It's crooked. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel 22. I remember growing up, I'll just tell this little story while I'm turning there. Um, I remember growing up that there was a place down in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, uh, called East Town Mall. And um, it was, wasn't doing so good. The mall was, you know, kind of falling apart and whatever else. And they brought in this horse racing thing, Penn National, uh, satanic nonsense. And they brought this thing in and, and crime in the area just went up like crazy. Used to go there to East Town Mall all the time as a little boy. Uh, by the time I left there... Back in 2013, 2014, I wouldn't have gone near East Town Mall. The crime down there. Gambling sure is good for an area, isn't it? You create a bunch of people that are that go from bad situation to worse because they just lost everything. A lot of them are drug addicts and whatever else. Now they got to find a way to make money. Quick money. They're not used to working for their money, you see. They uh, want that dishonest gain. Another way to do it is to give me all your money. Yep. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 13 through 16. Behold, therefore, I have smitten mine hand at thy dishonest gain, which thou hast made, and at thy blood, which that hath been in the midst of thee. Can thine heart endure, or can thine hands be strong in the days that I shall deal with thee? I, the Lord, have spoken it and will do it. And I will scatter thee among the heathen, and disperse thee in the countries, and will consume thy filthiness out of thee. We're reading too. Uh, and thou shalt take thine inheritance in thyself in the sight of the heathen, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Uh, it's talking to the nation of Israel, but uh, it's true of any nation that starts to go after dishonest gain and greed. I mean, what better nation than America, you know, <laughs> to, to have these verses apply to? I mean, it's written to Israel, but... Uh, Sure applies to, to America. Say, how so? We don't even have real money. <laughs> Our money's printed. It's fiat currency. It's fake. There's nothing backing it. Oh, it's backed by gold and silver. Oh, okay, so, uh, you know, Trump just does quantitative easing number four. Trump, the trained Jesuit, and he comes along and he just does uh, quantitative easing number four, and he gets just, just start injecting hundreds of billions of dollars, giving it to the banks over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you mean to tell me that somehow he got gold and silver to back all that up? 
hey, we just found this brand new mine out here and we got all this gold and silver. Now we can print money because we have the gold and silver to back it up. You're living in la-la land, people. They're printing money out of thin air. Injecting money into the economy like crazy just to keep this scam afloat. Look at uh, verse 27 of the same chapter. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 27. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy soul to get this honest gain. The princes of Israel, the well-to-do. Who do you think is trying to put a casino over this way? The uh, <clears throat> princes? A bunch of high society uh well-cultured, uh, you know, upper middle class. Uh-huh. Wicked, ravening wolves. Verse 28, And her prophets have dulled them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. The preachers in this country are telling people, you should vote for Donald Trump. Uh, he's a great man. He's, I, I think God's really, you know, for him and whatever else. The guy's a wicked, wicked adulterer. I mean, trained Jesuit and all kinds of stuff. Oh, but he's God's man. Uh-huh, sure. Uh, he's an actor, people. Just like Ronald Reagan was an actor. You know, but the preachers, oh, they got to keep it going, you know. I, I thank the Lord that Donald Trump beat Hillary. Can you imagine the country that Hillary would have created? Yeah, it'd have been pretty much the same as the one we have now with Trump in there. Hey, it's going to get better. I think, I think that we're going to have mighty revival in this country. I don't think God's done with America yet. I think that we're going to have... You see what they're doing? Same thing happened back in the past with the nation of Israel. The mark of every nation that falls is they don't think they're going to. We're strong. We're going into the future. America, power of pride. Uh-huh. Pride goeth before destruction and Holy Spirit before a fall. Verse 29, the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the, strong, the stranger wrongfully. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Well, right now, I am the man that is standing before the Lord and saying, Lord, let's judge this thing over there. Don't destroy this area up here. Let's get this stupid casino out of here. I'll call it out as sin. I'm not like one of these little fake preachers or fake little Christians that says, well, I don't want to disturb anybody. I don't care who I disturb. But what happens if God says, okay, is anybody against this? And all the Christians just kind of shut their mouth. And, well, I don't, it's just really up to somebody's preference and whatever. What happens? Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. When a nation gets so wicked that even the uh, righteous people, the people that should be righteous, the saved people, uh, start to shut their mouth, God destroys that nation. You know why this wicked country of America has continued on and on and on? Because there have been righteous men and women that have said, this is wrong. I'll stand against this. That's why. Mark chapter 8. Go to the New Testament. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. For what shall it profit a man... If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Just wanted to put that one in there. Um, there's a lot of people that think that the most important thing is money in this life. And uh, man, if I could just go to that casino, if I could just hit it big, if I could just, oh man, I could have a lot of money and think, are you willing to go to hell for it? Most people do. The vast majority of people, uh, they'll go to hell. They wager that uh, they're good enough to get to heaven, and then they spend their whole life trying to achieve wealth. Hmm. 
And finally, we will go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And if you're familiar with the scriptures, you know exactly where I'm going with this one. You know, once you get to be a Bible-believing Christian, you understand the scriptures condemn certain sins and whatever else, and you start to get real familiar with those passages of scripture so that you know right where to turn to when you get into conversations with people. If you're newly saved and you don't really know the scriptures that well, just uh, constantly go over the scriptures. You know, as you watch these sermons, turn in your Bible to them, mark them, and you'll get to know the scriptures. But let's look about this. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 through 11. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Uh, the vast majority of professing Christians are hell-bound sinners, uh, really no better than anybody else out there. They just have higher self-righteousness and fake professions of faith. That's all that they are. I mean, you know, where's the, the outcry from all these church buildings out there about a lot of the wickedness? You go there and it's celebrate faith and, oh, we just, you know, we're going to have a movie week this week and everything else. And these cute little sayings outside on their signs. They're not upset about the sin and the wickedness of this country. You go into those places, you start to talk about sin and wickedness, they get uncomfortable. The same way if you go into a store and start talking about sin and wickedness, those people get uncomfortable. Why? Because you're dealing with two groups of lost people. Verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Unless there's a local casino in the area, then you can go and you can be content with a whole lot more. As long as luck's on your side. But look at verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. A little while back, this uh, new IFB phony baloney, uh, Donnie Romero, came out, and, and he he's, you know, doesn't even have enough character to go and, and stand there and say, hey, i, I got to admit to things. He's reading off his little cell phone. I'm sorry. i got to step down. Worldly sorrow. You know, i got to step down. Uh, whatever. And everybody's, oh, what happened? And then Anders Snake, you know, his, his, these churches are independent, but Anderson just kind of flies over there to Texas and handles the whole situation, even though they're independent. <laughs> you know, caught, <coughs> caught, uh, excuse me. And, you know, Anderson comes out and he says, uh, you know, uh, Donnie Romero was there and he was going to casinos and, and he was with prostitutes and he was gambling ch with church money and he was also doing drugs. And, and so he, he had to step down and, and, you know, but we're going to keep him on the payroll until the next year. But we won't talk about that. You know, <laughs> what? Uh, what happened? Well, verse 9 there. He was trying to be rich and he fell into temptation and a snare and many foolish and hurtful lusts. And he was drowned in perdition, destruction in perdition. God destroyed his life. You say, well, we, we all need to have that free will, though. We should have casinos everywhere and then it's up to the individual. Okay, with that line of thinking, then we should also have... Uh, you know, strip clubs everywhere. We should have prostitution everywhere. We should have drugs of all kinds everywhere. We should have anything that's harmful. I mean, I should just let, you know, my son walk through a, a, a area with all kinds of machines running, heavy machinery and whatever else, and not try to warn him about anything. And if he falls in, well, that was his free will. <laughs> no, you protect people. This area needs to be protected from a casino. Verse 10, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, another one of the key scriptures of, of the Bible. For the love of money is the root of all evil. What is a, a casino? Love of money. That's why you go, because you love money. You want to go there, you want to get more of it without having to work. The root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That's written to Christians. How about that? 
erred from the faith. Well, you can't err from the faith if you're lost. If you're a Christian, uh, you're supposed to be a hard worker and not fall in love with money. Verse 11, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. We're supposed to be different. We will be different. Okay? Um, if you're not, the Lord's going to chasten you. He's going to scourge you. He's going to give you a weapon. Like any good father would a son. Oh, well, I think that you can be a Christian. I think you can go to a casino and have a little bit of fun once in a while. Uh, then you're not a Christian according to Scripture. You're a Christian of your own making. Of your own, uh, you think that you're God and you can create your own standards. Uh, no, a, the Christian life is a different life. It's a changed life. There are a lot of fakes and frauds on YouTube. So, that's going to be it for this study. And um, we need to be people of righteousness. We need to be people that stand against casinos and gambling and the lottery. Even bingo. Church, anyway, how many churches have bingo? It's another form of gambling. <laughs> Just incredible. So uh, I do hope everybody out there fights the devil and his system in whatever way the Lord calls you to do. We're going to fight. We're going to fight hard. And we're not going to give up. You say, well, you're so much against America, then why don't you leave it? I will. We will. Uh, when we hear come up hither, we're going to be leaving. Till then, we're just going to be a thorn in the flesh of the devil, and we're going to be that, that man and my wife, woman, uh, that uh, stand in the gap and say, this is wrong, this is wicked. And we're going to teach our son the same things too, so that when he grows up, he'll stand up for the Lord and for his calls. That's going to be it. We will see you in the next video. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.